catch and release may be harming fish. Do you catch and release? You might want to think again. According to a study published in the Journal of Experimental Biology, the catch and release method of fishing may actually hinder a fish's ability to capture prey after the hook is removed. Scientists from UC Riverside captured 10 shiner perch using a hook and line and 10 others using a net. The captured fish were observed using high-speed cameras and those with mouth injuries were found to have difficulty sucking prey into their mouths. Researchers explain the hole disrupts the suction feeding system, creating negative pressure in the mouth relative to the water as the fish open their mouths to suck in their prey. However, a researcher involved in the study said that further studies are needed to determine the long-term effects of hook-related injuries on fish. Keep watching for more marine life stories. Global warming is killing our oceans. A new study predicts that within 15 to 20 years, human-caused deoxygenation will be felt across the world's oceans. With climate change warming sea waters, oxygen levels in the world's oceans are beginning to drop. Surface water with higher temperatures absorb less oxygen. Such surface water is also more buoyant, so oxygen is less likely to make it into deeper water. The resulting conditions are dangerous to marine ecosystems, which depend on oxygen for survival. With the threat already underway, changes in the southern Indian Ocean and parts of the Pacific and Atlantic will be felt as early as 2030. Oceans in eastern Africa, Australia, and Southeast Asia, however, won't feel the impact until the next century. Worsening the effects of deoxygenation is an increase in carbon dioxide, causing oceans to be more acidic and less habitable. Researchers say carbon emissions must be reduced if we want to slow the oxygen loss, but monitoring and understanding where the oxygen levels are dipping and how it's impacting our waters is also key. Faceless fish found in the abyss. Australian scientists have discovered a faceless deep-sea fish off Australia's east coast during a month-long expedition. The sampling the abyss expedition begins from Bell Bay, Tasmania and ends in Brisbane. The investigator research vessel is equipped with multi-beam sonar that can map the structure of the seafloor. The expedition surveys the abyssal level, up to 6,000 meters deep in the ocean. Sleds, dredgers, and grabbers are deployed in order to collect samples of animals and sediment. Scientists said animals in the abyss are often small and move slowly, and many of them don't have eyes or produce their own light through bioluminescence. Another catastrophe caused by climate change. Japan's coral reefs are in danger. According to a government study, rising sea temperatures have impacted the ability of Japan's biggest coral reef to recover from bleaching, resulting in only 1% of the reef being in good health. Due to rising sea temperature, the reef has suffered bleaching events in 1998, 2001, 2007, and 2016, leading to a decrease in the overall coral volume by nearly 80% in the Tsukise Lagoon. A Japanese miniature official said that the loss of rich animal life under the sea would have a grave impact on the ecosystem in the region. The lagoon is approximately 67.89 square kilometers, with only around 1.4% of its corals healthy. According to scientists, it takes at least 10 to 20 years for coral to recover from a bleaching event. Coral reefs are home to 25% of sea life, even though they only make up 1% of marine environment. The only way for the coral to recover is if sea temperatures drop and algae are able to recolonize them again. Netizens slam frozen fish feature at Japanese skating rink. A Fukuoka theme park thought it would be a good idea to put thousands of dead fish under the ice at their skating rink and is now badly regretting that decision. Space World apparently thought the idea of gliding over a wide variety of sea creatures would be a unique draw for customers. So operators bought 5,000 dead fish and arranged them around the rink, along with blown up photos of larger marine animals. <laughs> when images of the theme park centerpiece got around, they were met with outrage after netizens thought the fish were frozen to death. Despite the clarification that live fish weren't used, most didn't see the appeal, calling the concept weird, cruel, and disgusting. The park was met with a barrage of criticism and calls to boycott the attraction. So much so that they decided to close it down on November 27th. 
space world is now melting the rink and will reportedly hold a memorial service for the fish sometime next year. Rest in peace, fishies! Those poor animals. Scientists are concerned by a massive shark die-off in San Francisco Bay, but are unable to get state funding to research the exact cause. 2,000 leopard sharks and hundreds of bat rays, smooth hound sharks, striped bass, and halibut have turned up dead on San Francisco Bay between February and July of this year. The culprit is suspected to be a parasite known as Myamiensis avidus, which enters the shark's nose and eats away at its brain. When the animal eventually succumbs to the parasite, it either swims aimlessly in circles or beaches itself. But scientists say only a small fraction end up on shore. Sharks aren't naturally buoyant, so the infected ones sink to the bottom of the ocean once they stop swimming. Leopard sharks are the most commonly spotted victims of the parasite, but it's a lesser concern for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife since the species is not endangered. Scientists fear, however, that other species are also becoming infected and dying, but just aren't washing up on shore. They also worry that the parasite could spread farther along the California coast.